Hello my soccer universe and welcome to this week's La Liga and Liga review. Portugal they didn't play. Yes, they, they played uh, but the cup com com competition and to be honest I didn't pay much attention to it. Um, as hard as it is to not put them up here on the background but after this weekend I had to wear Atletico Madrid and yes I need a second one um, because you know they're a big team I need a second one <laughs> let's put it that way uh, and so I put all other stuff here also realize while hanging hang this I'm fine with the background here but here are all doubles of that I have of other teams which means I probably need six more jerseys from these three leagues which shouldn't be too much but you know I will eventually get there uh, I might move with my acquisition now a little bit more towards na national teams or maybe Champions League, so let's see where it goes. It was a big weekend. I think uh, the headlines are rather easy. Barcelona loses the big match against Atletico Madrid, but more importantly loses Sergio Roberto and more importantly um, 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 Gerard Piquet. That's big. Real Madrid um, takes the lead but survives at Villarreal because Villarreal uh, starts too late and yeah we still have Real Sociedad playing the best soccer in all of Spain. In France the head headline is PSG combusts after halftime uh, by just the fact that there is a um, former world champion coming on for Monaco and PSG completely combusts. So let's go right to it. Um, I saw mostly highlights, I actually saw only the Atletico Madrid Barcelona game. I wanted to see it live, but the zone completely uh, messed it up for me. But I, I think I'm well informed. Uh, it started with three 1-1s, one uh, the third of which we'll talk about, because uh, Villarreal against Real Madrid, that probably was from the table, the best game of the weekend. Uh, if you just take the standings, not uh, the names in, in, into account. And Mariano, after a nice uh, Cavacal cross, gives Real Madrid an early lead. Real Madrid playing in the human race jerseys, uh, which are basically, they so adjusted that it, there's nothing of the human race idea in there anymore because they wanted to have the proper crest on there, which I, I, I agree, it looked ridiculous. And yes, I will do a review on this. By the way, I have shot already the La Liga jersey review, which will come, um, the first few parts uh, will come this weekend. Uh, but then, you know, also the sponsor needs to look pro proper, and so it's basically a cheapened reissue of the famous Dragon jersey. Yeah, it was appropriate for this game at least. And then Real Madrid holds the ball, uh, controls the game seemingly, but without really pushing. And then Villarreal kind of realizes, yes, we can attack. And uh, they bring on Chukwese, Estupinan, Pino, and so on, really go try to add to attack and put Real Madrid on the back foot. They get a penalty that Moreno can convert. They probably should have gotten a winner as well, but it ends 1-1 there. Um, then a game where I, I, I actually saw the last 15 minutes, uh, Sevilla Celta Vigo. Kunde brings, uh, gives Sevilla uh, the lead. I was about to say a German phrase. Uh, da, da, da. Um, after a nice uh, dead ball situation um, where uh, I think it was a power power of header and then Kunde just can uh, dust it off. But Iago Aspas, after a horrible goalkeeping mistake by Vachlik, um, uh, dusts also off in the 10th hand, maybe make it 1 1. And then it's actually Celta Vigo, who is a teeny bit better, and Nolito gives them the lead. And you think uh, Celta, who desperately needs a, a, a win, and who are now also uh, with, with a new coach. Think they will go with one uh, with, with a one goal lead into the break? Nope. Uh, the referee just allows a little bit too much, and it was only only two minutes on there, but three six seconds into the third minute, and Neziri, who played for the young, uh, after Navas cross, can make it level. The game then were not many chances. It was kind of you know not much much happening. Um, however. If there was something happening, it was on the Celta Divisa where Iago Aspas had a, 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 a good chance, uh, San Santimina. And then out of nowhere, Escudero's shot uh, after a rag rag assist is deflected and goes in, into the net. And two minutes later, the same thing happens to El Haddadi. And Celta Vigo loses again a game with two deflected goals laid on, a game where they probably would have deserved um, an equalizer. Or a draw, let's put it that way. 
Then we go to the big one. Um, as I said, I had trouble watching that because the zone really deserted, deserted me. But what I could see, uh, I think I did not miss much of the game per se. I saw the goal live, I saw most of the important scenes. Uh, Atletico Madrid first half came out and attacked Barcelona, uh, played quite quite well and had uh, I think hit hit the uh, the bar bar ones and it was a really good uh, tactically a very interesting game overall. Uh, there was a really uh, big chance from Messi, who I have to say, uh, if there was danger for Barcelona, it came from Messi, but Messi looks very much uninspired to me uh, the last few games. Uh, Something's not right. I don't want to say his time is over because you don't say this to extraterrestrials like him. I think it's more that he is really tired from traveling to the national team and then also seeing how Barcelona is. That's not his team anymore in any way. Uh, that's just something not quite right. And Atletico Madrid takes the lead just before the halftime. Everyone thought it would go nil nil. Everyone's kind of saying, yeah, this was a good game. They're just the goals were missing, but it was a super in, in, interesting game. And then the ball is deep in the Atleti half. Uh, I think Griezmann is pre pressing, but the ball comes forward. Then Pique has the ball, but spills it. Uh, it falls to Correa, who plays a wonderful pass to Carrasco, uh, who starts from his own half. Who comes out and then uh, Ter Stegen doesn't stay in. He thinks he can get it and come, comes out because he's kind of the sweeper keeper. Yes, probably was his mistake, but uh, given how he's playing, I think I would not put this goal as much on him as on what Pique was doing. Carrasco, with a super touch, gets it between the legs of Ter Stegen and puts it in, into the empty net from far out. 1-0 Atleti. And then Atleti makes an Atleti performance, uh, staying uh, sound defensively, but not hang, hang on off of the life. But you know, when they have the ball, also killing it a little bit with the ball. I mean, it was really well played from Atleti. And uh, yes, Barcelona should have had an equalizer through Langley. Uh, that header needs to be in. I think they had another chance la uh, laid on. But then the big things, are, of course, that Pique had to come off uh, with an injury, uh, probably out for six months. That does not look good or something. A long time. And also Sergi Roberto late uh, need, need to also come off um, with uh, pulled muscle. It doesn't look good for Barcelona. I mean, now you have Pique, uh, vital defender, if Ansu Fati out. Uh, you either pick up the pieces Liverpool style. I have not made the Premier League review video, or but I don't see the talent there. And Barcelona looks deflated. Um, there is at the moment a lot of talk about Barcelona not even making the top four. I say hold the horses. Uh, this will be a very long season with many injuries. Maybe Barcelona's hit early and later, uh, then later. And you know, the last time they had such a bad uh, start was in 991. And guess what happened? They won the championship. Doesn't look like they win the championship with Atleti already far off. Uh, and also Real Sociedad looking quite strong, but I would yet not go there and say that Barcelona is in that much trouble. They might be in trouble financially. That is a whole diff different story where they will be pro probably forced even to selling Messi. Uh, so let's see how this situation uh, is going to develop. Um, there are, you know, new prayers and maybe new coach. The other thing is that, you know, uh, with elections coming up, Kuman seems like, yeah, I'm just an interim coach. And then you ship him off to um, to Holland again, I guess. Although I wouldn't mind Kuman back to the uh, Dutch na national team. I think this is where he should belong. He should never have gone to Barcelona. But yeah, uh, it was an absolutely good performance by Barcelona. But I'm more worried for the future. I mean, the, the only positive is that they have now a few winnable games ahead of them. I also found it interesting, and this comes to the La Liga jersey review, um, that Barcelona had to resort to their fourth jersey from last season because this season's jerseys all are not good enough for Atleti. Uh, and I and I, I think if Barcelona just would have played this season with red red pants to really make their reverence to the 10-11 uh, jersey, it probably could have just worked fine. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you have your black jersey, no, this is not gonna work well. So I think it could probably work, but Atleti is kind of dark. 
uh, this season and then uh, the pink uh, catastrophe will also not work against Atleti so yeah Jersey news uh, Barcelona said I take it ahead I'm not a fan of Barcelona set uh, even with their new fourth jersey uh, this will also not have worked there so yeah but that's La Liga jersey review part two which probably you'll get Sunday morning Monday morning somewhere there um, let's see uh, how how my editing time goes uh, Eber and Getafe play a nil nil um, then Real Sociedad completely dominates Cadiz uh, but just Cannot put the ball in into that. I mean, uh, Jan Ozai and David Silva are probably at the moment the best midfield in uh, La Liga. And they are, are really a fun side to watch just if they would make a few Fiuma goals. Uh, Isaac in the 66 finally gives them uh, the, the lead because, he, uh, you know, from two uh, millimeters out into an M and that he just cannot, cannot miss. But uh, they had misses before. It should have been two or three nil. Valladolid gets a win, three one at Granada. And then the Alaves Valencia game was also a uh, rather interesting one because after 50 minutes, uh, Alaves had a comfortable two nil lead, uh, Navarro and Perez. Um, uh, giving uh, with, with, with the penalty, giving them the two nil lead, and Alaves looking all well set, but Valencia comes back, um, and it is late. Vallejo, uh, a really nice um, combination over Gamero, uh, makes it uh, two one, and then uh, San Martin, I think he caused the penalty, uh, equalized in seventy seventh, and then Alaves is pushing forward and allowing Valencia two huge chances. To, e to, e to equalize uh, both. Uh, the second one through through Echo, it was more remarkable, but the first one, uh, don't recall the name now, but it should have been in uh, there, and Valencia probably should, should have won that one. And yesterday evening, Bilbao completely destroys uh, Betis. Uh, Ruiz with an own goal, which was a little, little bit unlucky, then Kappa um, dusts it off after being all way out there, uh, free. Munein at one and Berenguer, it was out of destruction, and yeah, Bilbao getting a little bit on the up with this result. So if we look here at the standings, it's uh, La Real uh, ahead of Atletico, uh, however Atletico has two games in hand, so in reality it is Atletico uh, who are now the favorites. Uh, who are the true leaders of La Liga. One uh, is, um, yeah, one needs to <laughs> say for sure. Um, but you know, Real Sociedad playing well. Villarreal is also in there. And Real Madrid um, stumbling, but getting their results based on uh, their performances. Now, the one thing is Villarreal uh, lost big to Barcelona, but other than that, they pick up the points that are actually a fun team to watch. Barcelona all the way down in 13th at the moment, again, with two games in hand. So if they have 17, they are, you know, they are in touch with the top four. It's just the games in hand. And, uh, you can also see La Liga at this moment, especially the midfield, is super tight. We have many teams with 12 points and a few with 14, 13, 11, uh, 10. So, you know, uh, it's a little bit of a deceiving uh, standings here. Uh, if we look at the chances from a model, Barcelona is still given the second place uh, we, or the second highest chance of winning the championship. Hence, they're now up here in the number one spot because the number one team, Atleti, I'm wearing here. Uh, Real Madrid, of course, is behind that. Um, but, you know, they are just a little bit off Real Sociedad at the moment because Real Sociedad has a three-point advantage and getting better and better and better. Uh, also, look, look at the goal difference. I think Real Madrid is also trending down. Uh, it will be interesting to see them in the Champions League. Um, I just want to point out that Betis is a team that I don't understand. Uh, at all. I mean, they got not two big losses against Barcelona Athletic Club, but they are always up there, down there. Uh, <laughs> Weird, weird team, a little bit like Sevilla, who also have a similar, that both Sevilla teams uh, are either very good or very bad. Uh, the new uh, team on the bottom is unfortunately Alta Vigo, Real Valladolid gets out of the relegation zone, so rather interesting. Um, Atletico Madrid has a big matchup in the next round against Valencia, that's the, I think, the de facto big game. Barcelona also soon, I think, is also one uh, that I think many will be watching now. Um, I think the most fun game could be the Sunday evening game between Real Sociedad and Villarreal. I think this is the actual top game that is worth watching. Valencia Atletico Madrid is the big name game, but uh, Real Sociedad Villarreal, I think this is the game to watch 
Um, and probably I will make an effort of water watching it because those are, two, those are two very entertaining sites. Let's move over to France, where I completely lost track that they already played on Friday evening because international break, but I actually made a concerted effort to not watch anything on Friday after having watched so, so much. I said, and I'm going to take Thursday and Friday, going to take completely off. What I missed was a rather remarkable comeback by Monaco. PSG was fine in the first half, but Pace scoring two goals, the first one typically a uh, counter attack, the second one a penalty. Then uh, Moise Ken's goal was uh, called off for his very marginal offside. And then Mbappé, yes, was a little bit more. But you know, if one of those would have stood with a three nil and everything is smooth sailing. And then Cesc Fabregas come, 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 comes on, there's a different energy within Mon Monaco, the uh, PSG kind of Holds back, yeah, we have half this back. Let's save ourselves for the Champions League. Minus 65th minutes is 2 2, but through two full on goals. And then um, Diallo uh, hold it, holds, uh, makes a holding in the box in the 80th, 83rd is uh, via Ward and sent off, and Fabregas converts it and uh, mounts and completes the comeback for Monaco, who I think for the first time in almost 10, 10 years have now won against PSG, which the same thing is true for Atletico. They have not won in the league against Barcelona in over 10 years. Yes, they have won in the Champions League uh, twice against Barcelona, I think in Super Cups and, and, and so on, but in the league they have not. So yeah, that was a big one, uh, that Monaco uh, beats PSG and also Rennes does not look good, but I think they also have some in interest, losing at home to Bordeaux, who have not been good. Uh, Brest with a convincing 4-1 over Saint-Étienne, uh, Marseille needs had to be called off. Not the Mets player 1-1, uh, Lance wins at Dijon, kind of, you know, will set the trend for Dijon to go down. Montpellier Strasbourg was a crazy, crazy first, first half that which ended 3-3. I mean, after 30 minutes, uh, it was 2-0 Montpellier, but then two penalties, the first one of which had to be retaken because the goalkeeper was a little bit off the line. By the way, um, now this is rather random. If you have a chance, watch the Orlando City against New York City penalty shootout. It's the craziest thing. Also, goalkeeper off the line, make, having a big uh, say in there, starting all the madness in there. So uh, well, uh, here the goalkeeper was um, off, off the line and within four minutes, Strasbourg scores two penalties, 2-2. Two, two. Dalor, who already had made the 2-0, uh, puts them back into the league, but then Ajorg, uh, just before the halftime, 3-3. Three, three. Crazy game. Um, in, in the end, it's uh, Dalor assist uh, to Laborde that gives Montpellier a 4-3 win. Uh, Nîmes wins at uh, Reims in a derby of two very similar looking crests. Uh, Lyon gets a win at Angers, and Lille has no trouble uh, disposing Lorient. 4-0, which means in a table, things tightening up again. We had that yesterday in Germany and in um, Austria already. Italy is anyway tight. So France also looking a whole lot tighter and with PSG now only 93% chance. This is uh, pretty much the lowest since they lost to um, Marseille. Still very, very substantial there. But Lille and Lyon are now two and three moving up there. Monaco is come, 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 come up there. And the sleeper here is Marseille, who had already two games called call off. If they would win those two, they are right in the conversation, right up there as well. Uh, Ren kind of, you know, draw dropping out now of, of the top. If you look at the bottom, uh, Dijon looks in trouble. I think Strasbourg, although the, uh, the chances are um, not so high, I think it's also down to the down to rating. Strasbourg doesn't look all, all the great. Lorient, I think they play fun uh, soccer, but maybe the league is uh, sometimes a little bit too tough for them. For the next round, we have a classic duel between Marseille and Nantes and uh, PSG against Bordeaux. Those are two uh, big name matchups in France, of course. Uh, Marseille and uh, PSG at the moment are much better. Uh, other than that, um, Saint Etienne, who have been losing us seven times in a row, have, will probably do it an eighth time to extend the record against Lille. So, not looking good for them at all. We also have uh, a makeup game. Uh, on Wednesday between Lance and not so kind of even things a little bit more out. And now let's go to Portugal, where 
there was a switch in, in scale. That's the only thing I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the cup results, but Passos uh, uh, against Family Cow has been moved from Saturday to Friday at an early kickoff. So in case you wanted to watch, uh, still we have uh, Santa Clara play against Porto, Sporting against Moreirense, and Maritimo against Benfica. So the big guys have island trips. So that was the weekend in the West of Europe. Uh, let me know what you thought about the games, um, especially what you think where Barcelona will go. Also Real Madrid and who, who do, is, is Atleti really not a favorite to win it all? I think it's a little bit too early to call and Atleti is very much aware of that. Um, and also, will we get something exciting in France? Mm -hmm. Will Tuchel get fired? Let's see. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day.